Hello. This video is an introduction to the practicalities of compliance with the EN50126, EN50716 and EN50129 standards. First of all, it's useful to get a definition of what functional safety actually is. According to the IEC, functional safety focuses on electronics and related software and activates built-in safety mechanisms to reduce potential risks that could harm somebody or destroy something to a tolerable level. The avionics industry is strictly regulated by a number of certification standards, including DA178 for software, which was first published in 1992. IEC 61508 was published in the late 1990s and owed much to DA178. A generic standard for electrical and electronic systems, IEC 61508 was a turning point in the history of functional safety standards. It's since been adapted to specific domains such as medical devices, automotive and railways. The key goal of functional safety standards is to avoid putting human lives in danger. Different industries require different standards because there are significant differences between them. For example, the number of cars produced compared to railway signalling systems makes proven in service more convincing in the former sector. Another factor is that all of these industries had best practices before functional safety standards came about and it would have been not sensible to ditch them completely. The EN5012X series of standards has long provided a sector specific interpretation of IEC 61508 for guided transport systems. Here we can see the relationship between the different standards in the EN5012X series, including the superseded EN50128, and how each of these is related to software development. Although the primary focus for software developers was EN50128, the others also have an impact on the system as a whole, and by implication, the software as part of that system. None of those principles have changed with the replacement of EN50128 by EN50716. Note that EN50716 has also replaced EN50657, Railway Applications, Rolling Stock Applications. Most of the changes adopted by the new document involve fine-tuning, either to consolidate inconsistencies between EN50128 and EN50657, or to address feedback from the earlier standards. Some of the more significant re revisions relate to cybersecurity, non-safety related functions, the appointment of assessors, and the configuration of generic software. Connectivity is now a much bigger issue in railways than it was when EN50128 was introduced and EN50716 reflects that. EN50716 covers cybersecurity much more comprehensively. For example, Section 4 includes guidelines on integrating cybersecurity measures and Section 8 emphasises the need for secure data handling. However, the introduction to the document stresses that it does not specify the requirements for the development, implementation, maintenance and or operation of, of security policies or security services needed to meet cybersecurity requirements. It recommends the use of an appropriate standard for that purpose. Despite the changed identifier, the relationship with EN50126 and EN50129 is just the same for EN50716 as it was for EN50128. That is reflected in this fee model. EN50716 section 3521 requires that a life cycle model for the development of software shall be selected, but it stops short of dictating which model that should be. It does include examples of appropriate models, one of which is a V-model like this one. This V-model is primarily focused on EN50716, but for example, the system development phase in the top left is more the domain of EN50126. 
the tools named around the vModel are typical of those that can automate many of the processes involved with the development of a compliant system. Development process checks and safety measures are specified to avoid an unreasonable residual risk proportionate to safety integrity level. SILs range from basic integrity and then from 1 through to 4, where SIL 4 represents the most hazardous and hence demanding level. EN50129 describes a process for the derivation and assignment of SILs. It is clear to see the impact SILs have from this example table. The higher the SIL, the more insistent the standard becomes about which practice should be applied. To ensure smooth project development, all parts of the product and the process of its, processes of its development must be understood by every team member in the same way. Clearly defined requirements, including those relating to functional safety, help ensure that this is the case. This is not to say that software can never be used as an intellectual modelling clay to create a proof of concept. But the ultimate result of such experimentation should be clearly defined requirements and production code appropriately developed to, to fulfill them. There is little point in having requirements unless they are fully and completely implemented. That can be established by means of traceability. IEC standard glossary of software engineering terminology defines traceability as the degree to which a relationship can be established between two or more products of the development process. Bidirectional traceability means that traceability paths are maintained both forwards and backwards. Software development needs to be considered in the context of the system design, which is a domain of EN50126. The products of this design phase potentially include CAD drawings, spreadsheets, textual documents, and many other artifacts. The software requirements phase requires a description of a complete set of requirements for the software meeting, all system and safety requirements, and provide a comprehensive set of documents for each subsequent phase. Essentially, this phase is the interface between the product-wide system design of EN50126 and the software focus of EN50716. It details a process of evolution of lower level requirements as it relates specifically to the software system. Automating traceability as illustrated here can ease a project management headache, especially when tests fail or requirements change during development. The software planning phase of EN50716 requires that the software quality assurance plan, software verification plan, software validation plan and software configuration management plan shall be drawn up at the start of the project and maintained throughout the software development lifecycle. Each is therefore available as input from the software lifecycle phase onwards. The architecture and design phase requires that the software architecture specifications shall choose techniques and measures from table A3. In turn, that describes characteristics that are to be part of the architecture of the system. These are not to be confused with the test processes or activities designed to seek out related anomalies. Static analysis tools have a part to play in the verification of the design in the form of control and data flow analysis of the code generated in accordance with it. As shown here, the tools derive the relationship between some or all of the code components and represent that relationship graphically, such that it can then be compared with the intended design. The software component design phase lays down the processes and techniques that are to be followed in subsequent phases, making it the most verbose in the standard, but not necessarily the most time consuming in implementation. There are several aspects of software design and implementation highlighted, including static analysis, software code and guidelines, code complexity and quality metrics, and dynamic analysis, including code coverage, unit test, and integration test. 
There are many different sets of coding rules available, and even supposing a particular set is chosen as a basis, it is entirely permissible to manipulate, adjust, and add to it to make it more appropriate for a particular application. Clearly, if a tool is to be useful in such circumstances, then it too must be able to accommodate these adjustments. Static analysis tools vary in terms of their ability to identify the more subtle nuances of standard violations, but the more sophisticated implementations can seem slower because of the additional processing required to achieve that. A sensible approach is to choose tools with the option to run in a lightweight mode initially and to apply more complete analyses as development progresses. The LDRA tool suite supports almost all of the dynamic analysis requirements of EN50716. The unit test component, TBRUN, automatically generates test drivers and harnesses, or wrapper code, enables tests to be easily and efficiently executed, and stores both test results and data. These tests can be automatically regressed. The test data maintenance process is streamlined through the automatic deletion of changes in source code, prompting repeats of tests as necessary. EN50716 details techniques and can all be performed using the LDRA tool suite to determine the required coverage information as specified by the standard, including statement, branch decision, MCDC and procedure call coverage. EN50716 sections 75, 76 and 77 define quite a lot of the activity associated with compliance, but they actually occupy relatively little of the standard document itself. So the software component implementation and testing, software integration and software validation phases implement what I've described before. So to summarise, Functional safety seeks to reduce the level of risk in a device or system. EN50716 is a functional safety standard for GTS and rail systems. EN50716 superseded EN50128, which was in turn derived from IEC61508. EN50716 is a primary software standard, although others are significant. The higher the risk, the greater the sill, and the more onerous the overhead. Early phases are text heavy in the standard. They define later activities, which are described more briefly. Automated V&V &V and requirements traceability tools are key to efficiency. I hope that gives you a useful insight into EN50126, EN50716 and EN50129 and their implications for the software development process. If you have any questions, please do contact us.